That didn't quite go as planned. Which, in reality, I didn't really have a plan for Lift Me on Mars. And clearly, my lack of training and preparation for this event came back to bite me. So, in an effort to be transparent, even when things don't always go my way, I still want to have a conversation about it. So, realistically and mentally, I was not in this event. My head wasn't in it. Um, Miss Hyde, my alter ego, if you will, didn't show up to play. You know that scene in Infinity War where the Hulk won't come out to play with Bruce Banner? Come on, Hulk. What are you doing to me? Come out. Come out. Come out. Yeah, so the 48 hours surrounding the competition were pretty much like that. I went on Friday to get checked in, grab my t-shirts, run a couple errands near the competition area to get myself prepped for the weekend. And I, for whatever reason, couldn't get my alter ego, Mrs. Hyde, if you will, to hype up and come out to play. So I walked in Saturday morning, not really feeling it. Mentally, I wasn't there. I was kind of checked out of it. Um, I, you know, I can make all the excuses in the world, but I was not the least bit ready for this event. Um, but instead of like griping and complaining about it, I do want to get into it, break down exactly what went wrong, what did go right, and what I learned from the experience. So let's talk about it. So the first event of the competition was a farmer's carry medley, which consisted of three sets of farmer handle implements in ascending weights. For my particular division, the master's women's division, we started with 130 pounds per hand or 260 pounds total, went up to 150 pounds a hand, which is 300 pounds total, and finally finished up with 180 pounds per hand, which is 360 pounds total. And with this particular event, I right out of the gate, made some very minute, what I consider rookie mistakes that I know better than to do in other athletic endeavors. I'm still sort of figuring it out in strong women, but it really is something that should carry over. And that is practice like you're gonna play. And I didn't do that. So what do I mean by that? These particular farmer's handles in this competition were very smooth, they were bare metal, they didn't have any knurling. And I made the mistake of putting chalk on my hands. Now, in training, I had never put chalk on my hands to train farmers. And whenever I trained these implements, these very same implements, I trained three weeks ago at Spider Strength Gym, I didn't use chalk. And I managed to pick up 180 pounds per hand and move with it. So the weights themselves were not out of range for me. They were not out of reach. It was perfect. I was perfectly capable of doing it, but I made that mistake of putting chalk on. Now, for other people, chalk might work just fine. For me, clearly it was a mistake, and I'll explain to you why. So to get into it here, we start with 130 pounds per hand. I've got my grip, I've got my feet staggered. I get the pick, and then I move properly. That I did correct from the last event. I'm moving pretty good. I'm staying in line with the other two ladies. I move over to the 150 pounds per hand. I get off the line first. I'm moving pretty good. I'm thinking I'm gonna finish this event, everything's good. And then I get to the 180 pound per hand. I set my grip, set my feet, I go to the pick, and as soon as I pick it up, I feel it slip right down into my fingertips. And I knew as soon as it went down into my fingertips, there was no way I was gonna make it all the way to the end of the course. And then it just became a struggle of how far do I wanna go here? Um, not only that, but I also heard a very audible pop in my back. Now, I'm still not entirely sure what that noise was. I don't know if it was just a joint popping or if it was like my shoulder, like my left shoulder pops all the time. It's just part of what it does now. Um, I don't know if I pulled a muscle, I have no idea. So when I got done, I went back to my staging area where whenever I finally calmed down from the event, I felt a severe amount of pain behind my scapula or my shoulder blade. So I don't know if that was what popped. I don't know if that you know, how severe that injury was at that time. Um, I just know I was in an excruciating amount of pain and really had to make a decision like, did I want to bow out or did I want to fight through it and finish the day? So I went back, I massaged my, my back out, massaged my shoulder out, tried to work whatever was going on out. Um, fortunately now, 48 hours later, I'm pretty confident it's not torn. I think it simply cramped up really bad and like really knotted up. 
Um, but it happened in the first event, so I was a little concerned that I wasn't going to fare too well. Uh, as far as this event goes, I finished in the last place. I was number six out of six. That is the lowest I have placed in an event in my entire career thus far in the sport. Doubt that will be the last time that happens, especially the further along I get in this journey. But I wasn't really happy with that. I was really kind of mad at myself. And I was more so mad at myself for making the rookie mistake of putting chalk on when I hadn't trained with chalk uh, at all. So, you know, it, now it became a matter of, all right, I'm injured. I made a critical mistake that I shouldn't have. What do I want to do? Do I want to keep going or do I bow out now? And I hadn't really had to like dig deep and have those introspective conversations with myself. And I was like, well, I'm already here. I'm already at the competition. You know, is it dangerous for me to keep going with a, you know, with an injury or can I work around that injury? Fortunately for me, I was able to work around it. Um, I, it really didn't interfere with the rest of the day. It hurt a lot, but it really didn't interfere with any other movements. So I was able to put this one behind me and move on to event number two. So the second event of the day was an axle deadlift ladder with the last axle being for repetitions. And in my particular division, we started at 275, we moved into 305 and finished on a 335 axle for reps. Now I have never done 335 pounds on an axle before. The highest I've ever gone on an axle deadlift was 280 pounds. And like I said in the previous video, I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with deadlifts simply because I struggle with those. I don't, I don't really know why I struggle with them because I'm built, you know, structurally, I'm built very well to, to deadlift and to be a relatively powerful deadlifter. Um, I'm simply not used to that sensation when you do go heavy on them because honestly, I feel like my traps are just going to rip right off the bones. Um, but anyway... We had to start with 275, move up to 305, and hit up the 335. And I knew that I had to claw my way back from the bottom of the list. So I did everything I could to hype myself up, try to like power through whatever this Hulk block, we'll call it, that I was dealing with. And I'm I'm really proud of how this went. I ended up getting three reps on the on the third axle. Um, that's a huge PR for me, both from a weight standpoint and from a repetition standpoint which tells me that the numbers that I have in my training program right now are pretty much on point with where I thought it would be. I also knew that with how experienced the other competitors were and how strong the other ladies were, that for me, there was no point in completely gassing myself out on a deadlift because I knew I couldn't quite catch up with them. So I did what I knew I could physically do. I probably could have pushed for one or two more reps, but given that I was already injured and I was already gassing out through from the day, I didn't want to push it because I really did want to finish the day. The, the goal at that point became finish the competition and try to claw my way out of last place. So those were my two goals for the day because I knew I was out of contention for the podium. Now, I'm going to stop talking. I actually want you to listen to this nonsense. All right. I'm a screamer. I can't help it. But it worked. It got me through the event. Now on to the next event. So event three was a sandbag race and we started with a 120 pound sandbag. We had to go down and back of the course. Then we had to drop it, pick up the 140 pound sandbag and do the same thing. And this was for time. 
I knew that both of these weights were within my wheelhouse. I was perfectly capable of picking both up and moving with them. This is something I had been working on in, in training. The biggest difference was I have not trained on these specific sandbags. They were packed very well, very tightly. The promoters and the volunteers did a very good job of filling these sandbags. So I really didn't know what to expect. So to get into it here, they call go. I pick up the 120. I'm the first off the line in my heat and I am flying. I did not know I could move this fast, y'all. Seriously, I don't, I'm not a good mover in anything. In any athletic endeavor I've ever been a part of, I've never been good at moving. So I get the 120 done. I go to pick up the 140 and it's glued to the ground, y'all. It's glued to the ground. I managed to get it up to my lab, get it onto my chest. I moved too fast with this. The biggest mistake I made here was I moved too fast. If I had taken the extra second and actually stretched my arms around a little bit further, I could have locked in my grip. Um, there was no reason I couldn't reach around. Um, I do have T-Rex arms, so they're a little short, but I still could have gotten it, you know, gotten a finger lock on it. And then about five feet from the line, it fell out of my arms and I struggled just to get it over the line. A 35 to 40 second run then became a 54 second run. To say I was defeated is kind of an understatement because as soon as it fell out, I'm like, are you serious? Five feet from the line it fell. Um, but these things happen and you know, I have some technique things I need to work on here. Um, I had the, honestly, the sandbag was a little low. I should have had it higher up on my chest. I also should have been leaning back a little bit more. Um, I was focused too much on looking downfield and looking like at eye level downfield. I really should have been looking up more towards the sky and listening to my judge. I really need to pay more attention to my judge. She was coaching me on like where I was and like how fast I was moving and she was really doing a great job. Thank you Haley for that. Um, you were excellent. I appreciate your, your coaching and your help with that. Um, yeah, so I ended up, I want to say in fourth or fifth place here when I should have ended up in like second or third. So I definitely have some work to do on sandbags. That'll be a next part of the next wave of my training. Um, I really need to get better at sandbags. Moving on. Now, event four was the Viking press on this totally amazing looking apparatus. Y'all, I am in love with this thing and already trying to figure out how to make one and put it in my backyard. I'm a little obsessive, I can't help it. I love this thing. Now, the weight listed in our competitor manuals was that it was supposed to be 120 pounds per hand. I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of think it was a little bit heavy just because like 120 pounds for me moves pretty easily. And when I, I had the privilege of training on this implement a few weeks ago and 120 pounds felt like nothing. Um, so could it have been 120 pounds? Yes. And it just felt heavy because I was tired. Could it have been a little bit heavier? Also, yes. Um, the thing, the beauty about Strongman is it's not precise. I, that's part of why I like it. It teaches you not to really worry so much about the weights as much as it is the technique and the precision of your technique. So sometimes you get in a situation where the weights might not be 100% accurate. And I'm not saying that they weren't, were or weren't here. Um, it didn't matter at that point. It was, I needed to have a good showing on this event. I love this tree trunk Viking press. I think that's amazing. The biggest thing with this event, as you'll see, the pick height is incredibly low. So I struggled to get this thing picked up, but once I did, it started to go pretty well. So I'm getting wrapped up here. I get to the line. We had to wait behind the line until time was called. Get myself mentally ready. Judge calls go. I get up under it, I struggle, and you can see how low it is. And I'm not a tall human being, I'm only five foot six, and it was still pretty low. So I get the first rep out, I get the second rep out, and about this time, my soul left my body. I don't remember the last seven or eight reps. I just know I stood there and I was staring at that building you see off in the, in the distance. Um, I ended up with 10 reps here, and it was good enough for a second place finish which got me off of the bottom of the list, which was one of my goals for the day, just get off the bottom of the list. And seriously, my soul left my body. It was wild, I spaced out. Um, I had plenty of time that I probably could have gotten three more reps had I not been so tired and 
spaced out at this point, I probably could have made that happen. Again, it, it truly felt like this was closer to 140 pounds. Um, and 10 repetitions on 140 pounds is about accurate for me. So again, whether it was or it wasn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, it was, I needed to get it done. I got it done. Uh, there was no way I was keeping up with first place at this point because she was just amazing and just came in and completely like obliterated this. I think she ended up with 15 reps. So the come in second to somebody that has been like balls to the wall is just amazing all day long. I was thrilled with that. Now, the final event. So the last event for this year's Lift Me I'm Irish was a sandbag battle. And effectively what that is, is everybody in your group gets a specific weight on the sandbag and everybody has to put it, put it over the bar. Now to rewind a little bit, when I got done with the Viking press, I made the crucial mistake of going back to my staging area and eating a bunch of food. And I say it was a mistake because about five minutes before I had to go on and do the sandbag battle, I got the sick. If you've ever done a lot of physical exertion and gotten the sick, you know exactly what I was dealing with. I was super nauseous when I walked back into the comp competition arena. So I knew like at that point, yeah, this isn't gonna go any, you know, gonna go that well. And the goal, the goal at that point, not to be gross, not to be crass, was not to puke all over everybody. It's really what it got down to. So we get in line, we start going, get the 100 pound bag, I wait till I'm told to go. I knew the 100 pound bag would go, no problem. I train with the 100 pound bag all the time. Get it up, get it going. Still feeling terrible <laughs> at this point. Uh, so we go through, we get the 100 pound bag. We move the 100 pound bag, we get up to the 120 pound bag. Again, everybody completes the rep. I get up, get ready to go. I step up, pick up the 120 pound bag, manage to get the rep. Now we move on to the 140 pound bag. Again, still feeling pretty okay. Step up. This bag was the one I'd had trouble with all day and I was determined it was not gonna win. So then we move on to the 180 pound bag. So the first competitor here gets eliminated. She unfortunately couldn't get the bag over the bar. I have to switch sides, that's how the game goes. This competitor gets it up and over the bar. And then it's my turn to try this 180 pound bag. And about the time I get my hands under the bag and start to pick it up, I feel the sick in my throat. And so I keep trying, I'm gonna keep trying. It kept rolling out of my hands. I could never quite get it up to my knees. If I could have gotten it to my knees, I could have done it. The judge standing next to me is telling me to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And I finally look at him and I'm going, nah, if I keep squeezing, I'm going to throw up on somebody. So I opted to bow out um, instead of keep trying. The last thing I wanted to do was vomit on people or equipment. I didn't want to make anybody's job harder. So I called it for the day. Um, you know, the overall day wasn't the best performance out of me. If I had been 100% mentally into it and physically into it, like, I could have been in contention. I could have been up there with the other ladies, um, but it just wasn't meant to happen that day. And that's, that's okay. That's perfectly acceptable. What's going to happen. That won't be the only time that ever happens to me, especially if I stay in the sport longer. You know, I dealt with it with in Canon disc too. certain things, you know, not going right. Um, but you know, overall still had an incredibly enjoyable time. I love this event. It's very well run. Um, James Deffenbaugh and the Spider Strength Gym crew and the volunteers, they all do a wonderful job putting this event you know, together and in place. Um, James takes really good care of the competitors, makes sure we have all the information up front. Like he does a really nice job. He also opens up his gym, which is Spider Strength Gym, to people to come and train, you know, leading up to the event. He, uh, you know, offered, you know, everybody to come and try the Viking press and the farmer's handles and to test the equipment. And it's, it's a cool thing to be a part of. And I really enjoy this community. To get a little vulnerable here, I've always struggled to fit in in places. I still struggle in dog sports to fit in simply because I, I'm, I'm a loner type. That's just, that's just what I am. You know, when I stepped up and did my first strongman competition, I knew no one. And none of my friends showed up to my first event. And I just went in there and I just did. 
You know, the, the beauty of, of now is I've been in it long enough that I have people that I compete with, that I call my friends, that I admire and respect and enjoy competing with. Um, I appreciate each and every person that has shown me support, that has welcomed me in, you know, because I was a little bit nervous. You know, if you get into like the lo the broader picture of Strongman, you know, I'm not exactly the poster child of femininity. And I know that can be a little bit of a contentious subject for people. Um, but I appreciate that so far the people that I've competed with and the people that have promoted these events and have welcomed me in, they've been very welcoming. They've been very inclusive. Um, they, you know, a lot of people cheer for me, you know, even if I don't hear you on the day, I hear it in the videos and it's awesome. It's an amazing feeling to hear, um, and to be a part of a community that is so welcoming and so supportive because at the end of the day, when you really look at it, we're there to challenge ourselves. You know, the, the competitive aspect of it is great. And if you're you know, pushing for national titles and stuff, that's awesome. But when it really comes down to it, it's you versus the weight. And that's, that's really at its base level. So I appreciate everybody who runs events, you know, the promoters, the volunteers that set up events. I appreciate all the competitors that, you know, we all stick together, you know, everybody supports each other and cheers for each other. And I like cheering for other people just as much as I like being cheered for. So I want to thank everybody for that. Thank you for welcoming me into it because I do feel like I'm a part of something and it's awesome. It's amazing. Um, as far as what my next steps are in the immediate future, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, I'm giving myself a couple weeks off to let my body heal and to let my mind sort of reset itself. I've been really focused on Strongman for the last six months leading into South Carolina Strongest and of course into Live Man Irish. Uh, I learned a lot doing this event. I learned a lot of like what I need to do in the future to better prepare. James runs a very heavy show when compared to some other shows. And these are, they're hard shows. Like he runs hard shows, which I think is fantastic. I love that part of it because it is such a challenge. You know, I don't want it to be easy if it's, you know, I want it to kick my butt at the end of the day. You know, because that really tells me where I am as a, as a competitor and as a strength athlete. Um, but I do want to allow my body to heal. I still need to get my shoulder checked out, the shoulder blade checked out, see what's going on there. Fortunately, it feels much better today, two days later. It feels almost normal. It's still a little tight, but it feels pretty normal. So I don't really think I tore anything. I definitely didn't detach anything. There's no bruising. There's no indication of a detachment. Uh, so that's good news. Um, I think I am at the point now, though, where training in a home gym is only going to take me but so far. Uh, I really feel as if I'm more or less going to have to start training with other people, and which most likely means I'm going to have to go to a strongman gym. Fortunately for me, there are four surrounding me. They're all about an hour away or an hour and a half away. I th think the closest one might be a little less than that, maybe 45 minutes. But they're all still a significant drive away, so I do have to like plan to actually go to them. But I'm getting to a point where I'm going to have to go and train with other people. Not necessarily to seek coaching, but train with people who are more experienced who can help me correct these little minute technique problems that I ran into this weekend. And also to push me. You know, I, I push pretty hard when I'm by myself, but I don't push near as hard when I'm by myself as I do when I'm training with other people. So the next phase for me is going to be training with other people, um, trying to push beyond those barriers. As well, I'm going to take a couple of uh, diet cycles, you know, 8 to 12 week diet cycles, and drop my body weight. I'm sitting at 82 kilos or 180 pounds. That doesn't work for me. I don't feel good in that in that weight range. I feel much better down in the 150s. Um, I know that that's going to affect my strength gains a little bit, which is another one of the goals I had for the year was to increase my numbers. Um, all of my numbers right now, I'm at that top end range when it comes to being competitive. So I have to get my numbers up if I want to compete some more. Uh, the other addition to that is I found out from my understanding that um, Masters Nationals is going to be in Las Vegas this year. Uh, personally, I've been to Vegas and I'm not really interested in going back to Vegas for this year. So I think I'm going to forego um, nationals for this year, make that a goal for 2023 and focus on you know, dropping my weight back down, getting a little more athletic, a little more physically fit and focus on getting my strength numbers up, take some of the pressure off of trying to prep for nationals. I would rather take and forego nationals for this year, 
focus on getting my numbers up, getting them a little bit higher and aiming for a Masters Nationals next year so that I can go in and have a, a decent showing at a Nationals. Um, because I wasn't really prepared mentally to qualify for Nationals this year, I don't think it would be the most optimal for me to do this year. Um, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. You know, if it, if it was going to be on the East Coast, I'd say, yeah, I'd go and get the experience. But from a financial standpoint, it all, I also have to take that into consideration and Financially, Vegas is just out of the out of contention for me, um, which is fine. It's not a problem. You know, I can work towards a Masters Nationals next year and, and compete and work towards that in 2023. Um, as for the channel, the channel right now is going to go back more towards dog sports. You know, for my whole 37 subscribers that are watching this, um, I'm going to go back to working primarily on dog sports and focusing on dog sports. I've kind of neglected a lot of Banksy's training in the last few weeks to focus on Strongman. And it's not fair to him. You know, he's very athletic. He's very talented. He simply has some performance issues that we have to work through. And I need to devote some time to him. That doesn't mean Strongman's going away. That doesn't mean I'm not going to compete. That doesn't mean it's not going to get featured on the channel. Uh, it will once in a while. It's just not going to be my primary focus like these last couple of videos have been. Um, I'm going to put my emphasis more back on you know, his journey and trying to get him up to speed in Frisbee. He's got the capacity to do it. He just has to work through some things, and I need to spend more time with him. For my Strongman fam, thank you for listening to me ramble on. Thank you for your support. Thank you for cheering for me at these events. I love you, and I appreciate you. Thank you for your friendships. Um, that means a whole lot to me more than I can ever express on a video. And I will still be around. I'm probably going to volunteer to help run a couple of events. Um, if my schedule works out, I'm going to try to help uh, volunteer for regionals in some capacity. You know, I, I want to see the sport grow, same as everybody else. So, you know, if I can give back in that capacity as well, outside of just being a competitor, I'd like to do that as well. So thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for listening to me. And, and thank you for checking out my video. And we'll catch you in the next one.